Hello, my friends. A very good morning, and may God bless you all. All of you who are thirsty and hungry, you desire righteousness, and you want to know how, how you can overcome and prevail over this filthy world, increasingly lost and possessed by evil, this world that is already condemned. How can you save yourself? What do you have to do to save your skin, in a more current language of saying it? Bishop, I'm a bit lost, I'm disoriented, today is Monday and I have to work. I don't have a project for my life, I don't know what to do, I'm so disoriented, I'm lost. Help me, give me a word. I, I came here now to watch this live broadcast, to know what I'm going to do. Oh my God, what am I going to do with my life? My apologies, I'm not laughing at your affliction. I'm laughing at the answer that God has for everyone that is in this situation. He gives the tip. I already told you one of these days that the Word of God is the treasure map. It's the map where you can use to find a, a treasure that is priceless because it's too valuable, which is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. So he says like this, pay attention. You who are disoriented and lost and it's Monday, you are, oh my God, what am I going to do? You already got up and wishing to stay in bed and sleep more, but time is going by and you have to get to work and so on. You have to, to fight, you have to win your daily bread, isn't it? Look at the advice that God gave to a reminiscent or people that were left, a small group that was left there in Babylon, which were people from Israel and Judah that were confined to Babylon for about 70 years. And afterwards, God said, look, you are going to go back to your land. And those who remained strong in the faith, waiting, trusting, confessing the promise of God for their lives, then after the 70 years, they went back to the land they had come from. They left the slavery and they found themselves in the same situation asking themselves, what am I going to do with my life? What's going to happen once I get to my, my land? My God, tell me what to do, direct me. So he goes the direction, he goes the treasure map, illustrated and colored. For those who think, those who rationalize, not to those who, who feel, no, it's for those who think. God says to you exactly this here, look to Abraham, you who are a man, look to Abraham, you who are a woman, look to Sarah, Abraham's wife, look to Abraham, look to Sarah, for I called him alone, so Abraham was called alone, and having a wife that was unable to bear children, she was barren. When I called him, when I called him, I blessed him and increased him. You know that on earth, there are over 8 billion people. And out of these more than 8 billion people, 
more than 83% are descendants of Abraham, in a way or another. They are Abraham's descendants. So see what God does, not to mention those who've already died. Therefore, my friend, don't see your circumstances. Don't be looking sideways. Look ahead. Look at what God has promised. God wants to turn you into a great nation. He wants to give you a family, a blessed family, a family which will testify of the resurrection of Jesus, that will be witnesses of the Father, that will carry the image and likeness of the Almighty. God has extraordinary things for each of us. In my case, I was alone, sad, downcast, full of problems, full of complexes, of inferiority complexes. And look at me, God multiplied me, and God wants to multiply you, He wants to bless your life. However, in order for you to be blessed abundantly according to what Jesus promises, you have to hear and obey the treasure map, to follow the treasure map, which is His Word. Listen to me, says the Lord. Give heed to my voice, because God cannot force you. He cannot force you to listen to Him and obey and follow Him. No, this is something that has to happen spontaneously from each of us. Whoever wants will go forward. Whoever doesn't want will stay behind. That's how it is. God does not perform magic. But those who hold on to His Word, those who put their mind, their thoughts, according to His Word, the Word of God, which means they follow the treasure map, then they will get to the Kingdom of Heaven and the Kingdom of God eventually. However, the person needs to be strong for them not to be lost in their personal opinions, in the circumstances they are in, in the difficult moments they are facing. Let me tell you something. I never found anything easy. Things were never easy for me. They were always very difficult. Very, very difficult. But that's how it is. That's how it is. When a child begins to walk, it's pointless for the parents to try and want to hold them. No, they have to let the child go and fall so they can get up and then they will make the effort again and, and react and activate their, their body, the strength, the little strength they have. And God does that with us. He gives us the direction. And it's up to each and every one of us to make the effort to go against our own will, go against our heart, to violate our hearts that is full of desires, full of lusts, full of opinions, that is full of feelings. We have to cancel out the voice of the heart. That's it, to cancel out the voice of the heart and follow the voice of reasoning. The Word of God gives us the direction, a rational, intelligent direction, a faith which is intelligent, that thinks, a faith which is supernatural. It's not for everyone, because not everyone wants to hear. Everybody wants to feel, but not everyone wants to hear and practices the obedience and, and follow that Word. So God speaks to you who are watching me now. Perhaps you just got up, took a shower, got dressed and so on. So he's telling you, look to Abraham. Think of who Abraham was. We know his story. We know the story of Abraham and Sarah. Sarah was barren. She was already old. On top of being barren, she was already old. Their time of bearing children had already passed. 
But none of these mattered. None of these could impede God's hands, God's power from working. Nothing could impede the word of God from being fulfilled. And this is the faith that has to conduct your thoughts, our thoughts. So, in the hardships that I faced, that we faced, Esther and I, we were in a very difficult situation, but we believed we would remember, we would think, we would occupy our thoughts with what God had promised. And we would demand it from Him. Oh my God, you promised this. You promised that. So if you promised, you have to fulfill because you, you are not a politician. You are God. You are the Almighty. You are the Lord of heaven and earth. You are the Lord of hosts, host of angels. Therefore, my Lord, He is your word, and I am in this situation now. I am facing this critical situation, and I don't know what to do. I don't know if I go forward, if I go backwards, if I stop, if I sit, if I wait. What do I do? What do I do? I am disoriented. And God said, look to Abraham. Abraham was perseverant, he was patient, perseverant. Abraham was fervorous, Abraham trusted, Abraham waited in God's promises. And these forms in us a character, an Abrahamic character. And then we get to the promised land. Only by imitating Abraham and Sarah that we are going to be able to get to the promised land, to enter the kingdom of heaven. So, my dear friend, do not listen to the voice of the heart, which means do not listen to feelings. Oh, I feel this, I feel that. If you follow the voice of your heart, you are going to destroy your life. You are going to die. You are going to lose even what you have. Don't listen to the voice of your heart. God himself said that the heart is wicked and cruel, perverse. The heart is like this. And God says himself, who, who shall know it? Not even you know your heart. How can you give ears to something that you don't know, to someone that you don't know? You don't know your heart. I don't know my heart. I don't know. I don't know it. That's why I neutralize it. Instead of giving ears to my heart, I give ears to the word of God, to the treasure map. I observe. I look at what Abraham would do in my place. I place myself in his shoes. And you have to put yourself in Sarah's shoes. What would Sarah do in your place? And what would you do if you were in her place? What did she do? Well, she made a very serious mistake. But obviously she repented. And you are not going to fall into the same mistake she did. But she remained. She remained loyal, faithful to her husband. So he says here, Listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, you who seek the Lord, who seek for him. Then he says, Look to Abraham. Look to Sarah. Look to Sarah, for I called him Abraham. Abraham and Sarah were one, one body, for I called him alone. And you are alone, you are just one. The world is against you, and you are just one. And there is an, an army from hell around you, and you are just one person. So how can you overcome this army? Trust in God. He says, look to Abraham, for I called him alone. And when I called him, he obeyed my voice. And then I blessed him and increased him. Do the same, my friend. Abraham has to be the mirror 
for your life, for all of our lives. God commands us to look to Abraham. If you want, if you want someone to be a reference of how you can build your life, your home, your family, your achievements, your success, then look to Abraham. Look to Abraham. See who he was, what he did, how he proceeded, how his behavior, his character was. Look to him and you are going to see what God is going to do in your life. He's great. God is great. God is great. However, in order for you to have God's greatness inside of you, you have to be small, I mean humble, and give yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to carry you. Oh, Holy Spirit, here I am. Take my life. Do whatever you want with me. I surrender. And up until today, I've tried this, I've tried the other, but I, I regret it. I only made mistakes. But from now on, here I am. You promised, you said, look to Abraham. When I called him, I blessed him and increased him. So he's my life. Let your will be done. All right, my friend. Don't look at the circumstances. Don't be paying attention to the problems around you or to your enemies. Because if you look at your enemies, you're going to get lost. Look to God. How am I going to look at God? By looking at Abraham. Look to Abraham's character, his behavior, his faith, his trust, his patience, his perseverance. Look to him. Follow him. And you are going to break through. May God bless you. And I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.